Today, we're talking about some of the problems with the idea that depression is caused by a chemical imbalance. Stay tuned. Often, mental health issues are sold to patients as a chemical imbalance. I think the reasons might range from good, such as trying to show the patient that it isn't their fault, to not so good, such as trying to sell them drugs, as is the case on many TV ads promoting the idea. This idea is problematic at best. Today, we're gonna to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of drugs and mental health. After all, about 7% of adults in the US suffer from major depression, and about 10% of people over age 12 are taking antidepressants. A variety of studies show that somewhere between 75 to 80% of people in the general population attribute depression to a chemical imbalance. Now let me make this clear. The goal is not to dissuade anyone from taking what could be potentially life-saving medication from their doctor. For some individuals, this could absolutely mean the difference between life and death. However, it's worth diving into this idea of chemical imbalance, but it turns out that that idea about the cause of depression isn't exactly correct, and it isn't exactly harmless either. So let's get into some nuance. Nuance. First, let's get into the basic logic of chemical imbalance. Let's say that by giving you a serotonin boosting drug, we find that your depression is reduced. This suggests that your depression was in some way related to changes in serotonin levels, AKA a chemical imbalance. But remember, correlation is not causation. So that makes me wonder, do you know that the chemical imbalance is a cause of the problem and not a consequence of the problem? Did your body just go haywire and randomly start under or overproducing some ne target neurotransmitter? Or were there other things that were happening in your life, such as a major loss event, that triggered the emotional state that ushered in these physiological changes? My personal research career has focused on how emotional experiences trigger physiological changes. Physiological changes are a part of processing all emotions. One of the things that helps us identify emotions is that they have associated physiological changes. Now you can block those changes, but the changes themselves don't arise randomly in our experiments. Instead, the change in physiology results from bad things happening, stressors, loss events, social isolation, and so on. If you burn your hand on the stove, your body starts engaging brain areas and neurotransmitters that signal pain. It doesn't make sense to take some painkillers and keep your hand on the stove. So why is it that when our bodies engage the mechanisms to tell us we're in psychological pain, would we ignore the environmental and social causes that put us in that state to begin with? Doesn't it seem important to deal with the cause of the problem rather than just the symptoms alone? While relief from symptoms is great in the short term, we shouldn't just treat the symptoms and say, problem solved. Next, let's talk about what those chemicals do. Your neurotransmitters are used for all kinds of jobs all over the nervous system. Serotonin, for example, is the neurotransmitter targeted most by antidepressant drugs. However, did you know it's also critical for things like muscle movement, processing of visual information, such as line orientation and depth cues. It aids in stimulating gut contractions to help with digestion and move food through your uh, tubes. <laughs> In sea slugs, serotonin has been shown to be critical for certain types of learning, and as far as we can tell, they don't even get depressed. The point is, if you're taking a drug, it's gonna have an impact on your whole body globally, not just the circuits that you want it to impact. Antidepressant use has been associated with some side effects, such as weight gain, sexual difficulties, decreases in bone density, liver and kidney problems, and so on. In reality, we don't know for sure what the causes of depression are, nor do we have a good understanding of the neurotransmitter systems involved. The first antidepressants were developed for other purposes, and then it was accidentally discovered that they worked as antidepressants. This led to the development of similar drugs that work on the same neurotransmitter systems, but no one knows how or why they combat depression. It's not that people aren't looking for evidence of the effectiveness of antidepressants either. Dozens and dozens of studies have been done. 
a recent meta-analysis of over 550 studies on antidepressant effectiveness showed that there may be some, in the author's words, modest benefit over placebo. But the results are not totally clear or without criticism. I'm not saying all antidepressants are useless, especially given the lack of options and the potential benefits compared to the risks. You should make sure you talk to your doctor and educate yourself about any specific medications that you might consider taking. Now, I know it seems fairly harmless for people to believe that there's a chemical imbalance that causes depression. So if that's the case and it helps some people, why not just let it go? Why even make a video at all? Well, it turns out there are some risks associated not just with taking these drugs, but with beliefs themselves. You see, people's behavior is based upon their beliefs. And if the goal is to reduce self-blame for their condition, as I suggested earlier, research actually shows that belief in chemical imbalance causes of depression has mixed, at best, influence on self-blame. In some cases, it provides no benefit whatsoever. On the other hand, multiple studies have shown that it makes people less convinced that they have any control over their condition and makes them view the problem as being more hopeless and less likely for recovery than it really is. Now that's a really dangerous thing when it comes to depression. It also causes people to be more likely to rely on medication than on psychotherapy techniques, which are at least as effective as medications according to the research. Still, in a study published in January 2020, 90% of licensed clinical social workers reported using the chemical imbalance explanation some or most of the time for their clients with depression. So the truth is the chemical imbalance idea is far from perfect. It doesn't match the scientific data well, and it has the potential to do harm by making people less open to other non-pharmacological forms of treatment. It's good at selling drugs though. There are some other kind of hippy-dippy feel-good ideas out there about causes for depression that don't conceptualize the body as a broken machine, but rather as a human with unmet needs. Now, I make fun of them as hippy-dippy, but I actually kind of like this idea. Things like social support, love, exercise, sleep, nutrition, autonomy, a sense of purpose in your life, fulfillment in the things you spend your time doing, like work can have a profound influence on your mental health. Which seems more likely, that your body randomly started underproducing serotonin, or that your body is underproducing serotonin as a way of trying to alert you to a bigger problem? Johan Hari's book, Lost Connections, has a fairly broad overview of this kind of thinking and summarizes some research and ideas about ways we can broaden the definition of antidepressant to mean more than just drugs but rather any treatment that meets those unmet needs, which in turn helps depression. This is a topic in psychology that's pretty complex, and unfortunately the data that science has just doesn't match the popular thought. I like to encourage you to get out there and read the science for yourself, so I'm gonna put links to some great scientific papers in the description below. If you found this video useful, hit the like button, Consider subscribing to get more videos on all things psychology, and until next time, keep thinking. Okay, maybe the word tubes wasn't very scientific, but you knew the tubes I meant. There's only a couple of tubes that deal with digestion.